Services, Students Against Sexual Assault, Public Safety, Library and Information Services, Town Hall 2, and all the members of the planning team. If you are a part of this year's planning team, please raise your hand and be recognized. Thank you. If anyone needs proof of attendance for a class, at the end of the walk when we reach the Women's Center, you'll be able to pick up a slip of paper that shows that you attended. I also wanted to let you know that we have advocates from Town Hall 2 on site this evening for anyone who might want to talk for any reason during or after the march. You're able to recognize them because they have yellow ribbons. Before we begin our program this evening, can I ask you to please silence or turn off your cell phones just for the comfort of everyone in attendance. And now I'd like to introduce our opening speaker, State Representative Kathleen Clyde. Representative Clyde is in her second term in the Ohio House of Representatives. She represents the 75th Ohio House District, which covers central and southern Portage County, including Kent, where she resides. Kathleen graduated from The Ohio State University Moritz College of Law as a Public Service Fellow with, a, with the Dean's honor, Highest Honors. While at OSU, Kathleen was an editor of the Law Review and President of the Public Interest Law Foundation. After OSU, she became Deputy Legal Counsel to the Speaker of the House, the Ohio House of Representatives, where she worked on legal issues ranging from access to the courts to rights voting, voting rights. Kathleen is currently an associate in the Kent Law Forum of Williams, Kelser, Krochkowski, and Kahn. So join me in welcoming Kathleen. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys all hear me if I uh, don't use the microphone? Anyone not able? Usually I project pretty loud, except when there's a train. <laughs> Even I can't talk that loud. Uh, it's, it's really an honor to, to be here with you all tonight. Uh, I went to Take Back the Night uh, events uh, not too, too long ago uh, at my campus in Connecticut, Wesleyan University, and uh, really had my eyes open uh, to the importance of empowerment and solidarity of women in standing up against uh, violence against women. Uh, and sexual violence against men and women. So I am really honored to be here with you all. Uh, and I think this event is so, so important. Um, I especially, I, I heard the themes, uh, the organizers uh, were to talk about empowerment and solidarity, which I think are, are so critical uh, when we uh, think about these issues and address them and, and fight back against uh, this violence. So. What I wanted to kind of empower you with was some knowledge of what's going on at the state level, uh, some of the things that I'm working on in the legislature, um, and that I would love to have some solidarity of, of men and women on Kent State's campus to kind of help uh, get some of these important things through and also fight back against uh, some of the measures that are uh, being taken, I think, that are anti-woman and uh, not helpful to this important cause. Um, and when I was at my Take Back the Night event on campus, I, it was the first time I learned that one in five women are victims of rape in their lifetime. Uh, there's about 750,000 um, adult women in Ohio that are rape survivors. Uh, and 63% of sexual assaults are not reported. So these are some pretty alarming statistics that I think we all need uh, to work uh, to fight back against and to try to reverse uh, these alarming, uh, kind of these alarming trends. And Ohio has a lot of work to do, unfortunately, and that's what I kind of want to empower you guys to know that um, our state doesn't do enough, doesn't do enough. Um, we have only 27 uh, rape crisis centers that operate in 37 counties in Ohio, and there's 88 counties. Uh, so about half of our counties uh, do not have a rape crisis center, do not have the critical services that Town Hall 2 provides uh, here in Portage County. So that's something I'd like to work on uh, changing, and I'd love to have uh, all of your support 
uh, in doing that. Um, for example, I, I know you all know about uh, the Steubenville situation uh, that occurred earlier this year. That area only had one part-time sexual assault victim advocate uh, receiving less than $15,000 a year uh, in funding for that program. So, you know, if we don't provide for these things and ad adequately uh, staff our state and have uh, the responses that are needed, you know, bad things happen. And we know what happened in Steubenville and, you know, we need to, to make sure that, that these centers are adequately funded and that they're where we need them all over our state. Uh, we tried to offer an amendment to the budget. The budget is currently pending in the Ohio House. I've been working hard on that. You probably heard a little bit about that. Uh, we tried to offer an amendment uh, to give some funding uh, to the Steubenville school system to, to get a pilot program going to try to address uh, sexual assault issues, education, uh, and response and awareness. And that, that amendment uh, was denied uh, by the majority uh, in power in Columbus. So these are the kind of things that, that we can do uh, if we're all educated in the State House and, and care about these issues. So I'll, I pledge to keep working on them, uh, but I would love to, to have your support. Um, there is legislation pending right now to create a rape crisis fund in Ohio. Right now there is no state level funding uh, for rape crisis centers in Ohio. Uh, every one of our neighboring states does have state funding available to rape crisis, and Ohio does not. That's shameful, uh, and I think we should all work together uh, to try to reverse that. There is a bill pending in both the House and the Senate uh, that would levy a fee uh, on sex offenders uh, of $100, and it would go into a fund uh, to be used for a rape crisis. I don't think it will generate enough money, uh, and I don't think that's the best way uh, for us to fund these important services. Um, I think we should be doing it out of our general revenue uh, fund, but uh, it's probably a step in the right direction considering we have no state funding. Uh, but let's all work together to advocate for, for something better, and I pledge uh, to be your partner in doing that. We also have a bill uh, that's pending before the Senate, uh, sponsored by State Sen Senator Nina Turner, who you may all have heard of, she's uh, from Cleveland, a great advocate, that would get rid of the statute. Right now there's a statute of limitations on rape of 20 years. So if you don't report a rape that's occurred within 20 years, uh, you can't, you can't uh, report that to legal authorities. And this would uh, take that statute of limitations away. Uh, so often it's a vulnerable position that women and men are in to report sexual violence and uh, they, need, they may need that extra time uh, to report that criminal activity and this bill uh, would allow for that. We also, uh, in the House of Representatives, where I am, have the CARE Act uh, sponsored by Representative Nikki Antonio from Lakewood. Uh, some of you may be from near there. Uh, that uh, would require hospital emergency rooms to provide information to rape survivors about preventing pregnancy and about sexually transmitted infections and diseases and how to prevent those uh, and deal with that after a sexual assault uh, takes place. And it would also require hospitals to offer emergency contraception, uh, the morning after pill uh, or whatnot if that is requested uh, by the victim. That bill has been introduced several times and has not gone anywhere, uh, but I think it's important for you to know about it and that, that we uh, support that legislation. I have a bill uh, that would protect uh, domestic violence victims uh, who, the biggest example I can think of is when you register to vote. I hope you all do that. I hope everyone here is registered to vote, and uh, if, you're, if you're not, I can, I can help you out with that. Some victims of domestic violence do not register to vote because when they do so, their address becomes part of the public record. And they're, if they're in a, a very uh, abusive cycle of violence, uh, they may have to keep their address secret and shielded from their abuser. So they do not register to vote and do not participate in our democracy because of their fear. Uh, 
37 states have address confidentiality programs that protect women of, who are survivors of domestic violence in kind of that harshest cycle of violence who want to shield their address, uh, allows them to do that. So it creates a safe kind of post office box-like address uh, for women to use, uh, women and men to use, uh, to register to vote and for other government services where your address may be part of the public record. So 37 other states have that. It's not a novel idea, but I think it's an important uh, service we should provide to, to victims. Uh, and I will continue to work on uh, getting that passed. I currently have a bunch of uh, bipartisan co-sponsors. I'm a Democrat. I have a Republican leading uh, the bill with me. And hopefully, we can all come together. It shouldn't be a partisan issue uh, fighting against domestic violence. And um, I'll try to keep you updated about how that goes. But hopefully, uh, we all can support that. Another thing I've been fighting against uh, for you all to know about is there's an effort at the state level to defund Planned Parenthood. Uh, I, I think that that would be a huge negative uh, for the students at Kent State, for the women in Portage County, uh, in this community. Uh, it's, it's really kind of a right-wing attack on a woman's right to choose and on abortion. Uh, but only 3% of what Planned Parenthood does, as, as we all know, is, is abortion. 97% of what they do uh, is preventative health care, cancer screenings, uh, birth control, uh, testing for STIs, um, just, you know, pretty necessary stuff. And uh, we need to make sure that those services are available. So if you guys could all uh, spread the word that we need to fight back against defunding of Planned Parenthood uh, here in our state. That currently is in the budget bill. I offered an amendment on the floor of the House to take it out, and it was uh, it passed on a party line vote. Every Republican except two voted for it, and all the Democrats uh, voted against it. So we'll keep fighting for you guys. I want you to know that, but I need your help. Um, so that's kind of a rundown of what's of what's going on in, in the Ohio General Assembly. I wanted to inform you guys so that you would be empowered with that knowledge of of where Ohio is, I think we have a long way to go, uh, and I think that there's issues that are happening right now. That budget will be adopted by the end of June. We're required to put a budget in place by the end of June, so we got to fight back on this Planned Parenthood issue. And for all these other important bills that I told you about, funding for rape crisis centers, um, help for domestic violence victims, uh, the, the CARE Act, uh, I think they're all really important. And I want to salute you all uh, for being here today. Uh, it really is an honor to represent you in the Ohio legislature. It's an honor to be a young woman uh, and the second youngest uh, in the entire Ohio General Assembly. I really care about you guys here at Kent State. I salute what you're doing um, and I want you to know your voices are important and your solidarity is important and I am here uh, in support of all of you. So thank you very much for having me. Uh, and I uh, am, again, just so honored to be your representative and to be here. Thank you.